God bless you, people of the earth and the people of God. I want to greet you all in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will give me wisdom to be able to communicate my the message that is it is in my heart to the people of the world. The way that it will minister. And I pray that God, let the wind of the Lord carry this message to as many as will hear it. To bring them to understanding. Let us reason. Let us reason, people of the earth. Let us reason. House of Israel, let us reason. Human beings, let us reason. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 6, the Lord said, the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower feathered, because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withers, and the flower feathered, but the word of God shall stand forever. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I feel like crying. This song I'm listening to say that this world is a wilderness. The, when we look at the life of man on earth, it's like flower that springs out during the spring and blossoms. And then everybody admires it. And it comes up during the height of his glory. You see the beautiful tree bearing beautiful flowers and you just admire them. But as soon as the wind, um, the fog season comes in, you see those flowers fading. And you see the leaves dry up. They turn yellow. They lose life. And they fall off. We are looking for another set of. And then you look for the next season will be new set of. Let me see where that, that reminds me of what Solomon said. Let me see what Solomon said. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. The song I'm listening to say, Homesick. That is by Dottie Rumpo. Okay. The word of the preacher the son of David, king in Jerusalem, that's Solomon. We know about Solomon. He, God blessed him with wisdom, understanding, counsel, and might. He had everything he wanted, anything, anything he desired. The kings of the earth, they were bringing him gold in abundance. Everything that Solomon wanted, God gave him. Probably God used these things to show him that they are nothing. Where is Solomon today? Heaven or hell? Verse 2 of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 says, Vanity of vanities, said the Lord preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit had a man of, of all his labor which he taketh under the sun? One generation passeth away, another generation cometh. But the earth abide forever. Before I continue, you see, one day I was in a store to buy something and one lady mentioned her surname. I turned around and looked at her. I said, are you a daughter of so and so person? She said, yes. I said, you mean it? Immediately I remember. That's one remarkable thing I do remember about the man. He was a very rich man, you know, well learned. And he was building, a, he built a mansion back home. That mansion, he kept changing the face of that mansion, renovating and renovating and renovating. So, when in the process of our talking, when she said, my late father said, my God, your father is late. Then, immediately, I remember that mansion. Then my question was, who is living in that mansion now? After all the defacing and renovating and renovating, I thought about, I keep thinking every day about the people I knew in the 90s. People that were considered well-to-do. 
people that we are considered. Some people see them as gods, almost like God, because they were able, they had ability to help people. That was their time in life. That was the time of their fame. That was the time of their glory. They, they live in mansions. They have all kinds of cars. They were reverenced, but they are no longer on earth today. The only thing, everybody dies poor. Everybody dies with nothing, not even a pin. It is the living, your relatives, if you have one, or if you don't, strangers, that will put the clothes that the person will wear. And they put the best clothes, and that is the final. The best clothes, the best color, and dress the person and put the person in a box and cover and they dig a hole and put the person in that hole the person is not living in a mansion anymore the person is no longer living um even in the cemetery in where the person is carried there's no mansion there but then the soul lives on The soul lives on, whether in hell or in heaven. The person now has returned to his maker too. The only thing the person carries from here on earth is your soul. Which God will now going to judge how you spend your earth, your life on earth. God judges every action of man on earth. Now let's continue. And when the people die, another generation will replace them. Anybody that has somebody will replace that person. Okay, let me read again. Solomon said, One generation passes away, another generation comes. Comet. But the earth abides forever. The earth is still here. <laughs> That's the thing. Some people that lived on the earth as though they, they own the earth, they left it, and the earth is still here. The sun also arises, and the sun goes down and hasted to his place where he arose. The wind go towards the south and turn it about unto the north. It whirled about continually. And the wind returned it again according to its circuit. The wind goes round and round and returns to its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea. Yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence he, the rivers come. Neither they return, the river come and go. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing. Not the ear filled with hearing. Yeah. If, for instance, you say you want to entertain yourself now to start watching movies, you cannot finish watching all the movies in the world. And yet, the more you watch, the more you crave, and then that's nothing. It has no substance. You say, okay, I want to start eating food. The person is killing himself with food. There's no, nothing new under the sun. What the rich really eat is what the poor in what the poor eats. I have gone gone to the best restaurant in America. The best, the most best restaurant in America. What are you going to see there? Steak, um, shrimp, um, broccoli. Name them. The poor eats, the rich eat. So what's the difference? The poor is living in, you know, say, living in a mansion. Yeah, that's it. Okay, more comfort. And the, the poor, the rich, has more comfort than the poor. But at the end of the day, both of them will leave the earth. There is more hope to an animal than a man that has no Christ. Because when an animal dies, he turns to dust. And he and Magos will eat it. But without Christ, when man dies, he also turns to dust and Magos eats the body. And but his soul will descend either in descend with soul descend either in hell or he goes to heaven. But without Christ, he descends to hell and suffer forever. There is no free charge of soul on earth. The soul of believers. Are purchased by God. The soul of unbelievers, they spend eternity in lack of fire. No free of charge life. 
You can do anything you like free of charge, but you give account of it. Okay, let's continue. The preacher, Solomon. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that had done under heaven. This sort travel had God given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And behold, all this vanity and vexation of spirit. This is Solomon talking. We all know Solomon. He had 1,000 women. So, let me read it again. I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This saw travel had God given to the sons of men to be exercised Yahweh. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun. And behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. And that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I communed with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate that he has so much, and I have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yet my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge, and I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceived that this also is vicious of spirit, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increased knowledge increase it to his sorrow verse chapter 2 he said i said in my heart go to now i will prove thee with my heart therefore enjoy pleasure and behold this also is vanity enjoy pleasure it's vanity let me just cut off this music enjoy pleasure is madness that's what he's saying I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mad, what does it? I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet I quanted my heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly, till I might see that which was good for the son of men, sons of men, which they should do under the heaven all the days of their lives. He was looking for something that is really good for man to do. Something that is good. He tried wine. Mm -mm. He tried laughter. Enjoying himself with laughter. He said that is madness. He tried pleasure of the flesh. Um, if we read what Solomon, the kind of food that comes onto Solomon's table. One day I was reading it before my daughter. She said, mommy, that will make somebody sick. You see? The kind of pleasure, the kind of food that comes up on Solomon's table in one day. His body cannot contain it. The body has a limit of food you can put inside it. And if you put more than what is in the bed, the person can die from heart, from heart disease. Everything is, has temperance. Everything has temperance. I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet I quanting myself heart, I quanting my heart with wisdom and to lay hold on fully. I might see what that what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. I made my great works, I built me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water where is the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house. Also I had a great possession of great and small cattle, above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold, and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me and whatsoever my eyes desire, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion in all my days for my day labor. Then I looked on all the works of, that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. I taught myself to behold wisdom, 
and madness and folly. For what can the man do that cometh after the king, even that which had been already done? Then I saw that wisdom excelled fully as far as light excels darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. And I myself perceive also that one event happened to them all. Did you hear that? Even though the fool walks in darkness and wisdom excels fully, but the same event happens to both of them. Death. Then said I in my heart, as it happened to the fool, so it also happened to me. And why was I then more wise? <laughs> Solomon is asking why was he more wise. So because something that happens to the fool also happens to the wise. Why was I then more wise? Then I said in my heart that this also is vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever. Seeing that that which is now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how died the wise man? As the fool. Both of them died the same way. Both of them are buried in the grave. Therefore I hated life. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Yet I hated all my labor which I had on taken under the sun. Because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. Let's continue the music. That is it. I have seen that the only thing that has sometimes in life is Christ. That is the only joy and peace that man has on earth. Okay, let me continue. Yeah, I hated all my labor which I had undertaken the son because I should leave it unto another man, unto the man that shall be after me. Everything I have done, I should leave it to somebody that will come after me. And who knows whether he shall be a wise man or a fool. Ye shall he have rule over all my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein shall I have showed myself wise under the sun. This also is vanity. That everything he has labored, accumulated, is going to go into the hand of another man. And he, yet he doesn't know whether the person is going to be wise or fool. Whether the person is going to treats all his labors, all that he accumulated with dignity, or whether the person is going to treat it with contempt. Therefore, I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I undertook under the sun. For there is a man whose labor is in wisdom and in knowledge and in equity, yet to man, to a man that had not labored therein, shall he leave it for his portion? This also is vanity and a great evil. See, people with labor in education, acquire knowledge, wisdom, everything, and everything they have labored, somebody else can inherit it. It could be their children. If they don't have children, a stranger will inherit it. So what is it? What exactly is it in this life? The Bible says that all flesh is grass, and all the glory of the flesh is the glory of death. The grass withers and the glory fades away. But the word of God abide forever. We'll come back to that. Then Solomon called that great evil. For what had man of all his labor and all the vexation of his heart, wherein he has labored under the sun? For all his days are sorrows and his travail grief, yet his heart taketh not rest in the night. This also is. See, most of the rich people who have their ships in the sea, cars on the road, and their containers on the high seas, they can't sleep at night because they're thinking of their container. What will happen to their container of goods? Some people have invested so much on the containers coming from abroad and for their businesses and they cannot have peace until that container lands safely and they get all their goods because all they labored for in this life, they put it on that and ordered and invested in the goods. 
I know of that. I know of that. I remember something that happened in the 90s when I was in Nigeria. You know, I know a man who borrowed so much. In fact, that is the cause of so many people. Many people, they borrow so much money, so much money, and they use it to buy goods and ship maybe to their people or start business back home. And then somebody will simply land over those goods and take it away from the owner. And I also seen places where the what the owner has has killed him or her. People simply kill somebody f- for what he has. That the person has so much accumulated, he made investment, and then when he said, "Let me go and enjoy myself," that was the end of their life. Like the rich fool, the Bible says about the, Jesus talked about the rich fool who gathered and gathered and gathered and said my soul enjoy he kept gathering expanding his band and then when he said now i have accumulated enough now let me rejoice that night he said let me sit down and enjoy that was the end of his end of his life on earth that day the owner of his soul came and said remember the owner of his soul that means you and i don't own ourselves don't own our souls the owner of his soul i said you foolish Today, your life is required of you. Okay, let's finish Solomon's wise words. There is nothing better for a man that, than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. For a man to enjoy what he has accumulated, to enjoy it is a God-given power to enjoy wealth. Nobody can give you power to enjoy what. The what you have accumulated is only from God. For who can eat or who else can hasten on their own more than I? For God give it to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he give it travel to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is va- in vanity and vexation of the spirit. So we see in this world, this world, what Solomon said is what we know about that is happening. But it's just the thing is, how many people have really taken time to think about what exactly is good for me on earth? The Bible said that a living dog is better than a dead lion. What is good for me on earth? The people that were here the other day, they are gone. The people that we admire, the people that we feared are gone. What exactly, what legacy am I living on the earth? The only good legacy we have right now are the people that feared God. The people that left us like David. The people like people that left us the legacy of the word of God. Moses. The heroes of God. The word of God. The, the Bible said that all flesh is grass. All the glory of the flesh is the glory of the grass. The grass withers, the glory fades away. But the word of God abides forever. That is the only thing that abides forever. The Bible said that this helps present heaven and earth. God has stored it off a fire. Fire will consume the whole heaven and earth. So, when fire of God consumes, God is going to judge the world. During the time of Noah, God asked him to build an ark. God asked him to build an ark because he was going to destroy the whole earth with flood. In spite of everything people have, in spite of everything people have, God is going to let everybody be drowned by flood with all their wealth with all their towers with everything because the kingdom of God is not meat and drink you know that's why Solomon said it is vanity everything people have gathered even if you have hundred mansions scattered across the globe you still sleep in one in one night it is your safety is in the hand of God your life is in the hand of God you still have God to trust to protect you because if many people have died in their private jets many people have many people who are making noise today they just tomorrow they are no longer they cannot they won't wake up tomorrow morning people who are effecting human decision I just this today is 
Today is what? Today is Thursday. This week alone. This week alone, so many terrible things have happened on earth. Are you talking about the plane crash that happened in Iran? Or the how many soldiers that were killed by the you know, missiles? Or the nonsense this is or the just decision that the president took that has cost 80 soldiers their lives and now i saw soldiers marching to the middle east they're going for war how many of them will return with their lives they have families they have mother they have father they have they are young just one decision somebody can take one little decision one mistake a ruler can make can cost millions of lives a ruler can just make a one decision and say, and it was that decision is a mistake. And millions of lives are gone. What exactly is good for people on earth? One generation goes, the another generation comes in. Just exactly as it is in the Bible. One generation, the people I knew in the 90s, who we are rich, who we are famous, where are they today? People that we call stars, people that we, people that people bow to and admire them and worship them. Where are they today? Some of them have grown old and no longer on the scene of life. And they're trying now to manage their old age. Some of them are out of earth, are shaking out of the earth. And they have gone to give account of how they, what they did with their lives. You know, I know of somebody who accumulated so much accumulated so much you know plan his retirement you know all the places he will go and what he will do during the retirement developed properties and de developed properties and all that stuff and um, you know what he will do he has already done this thing at the early stage of his life and then exactly at the age of 50 the person died from cancer and he was dying he looked at all the things he showed on the television everything he has accumulated and he said what next that's the question he asked i remember he said what next he was confused and he was crying and said why me why me because he was dying from cancer he was confused I have seen hard stories of people, billionaires. After everything they suffered and gathered, they just closed their eyes and that's over. Or somebody just said, I don't want you to stay here on earth anymore. Why am I saying these things? I am saying these things because there is something better than all these things. God has offered us free gift of internal life. So that whether we live here on earth that belongs to God, because this earth is going to consume it, God is going to burn it with fire and replace it. God is going to change, replace the earth with his own earth. Because the earth has been so much corrupted. The earth is the laws. The, somebody owns the earth. Somebody owns the earth. And he is going to bring judgment upon the earth. And he is going to replace it. He has already decreed his judgment upon the earth. In Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10, the word of God said, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works therein shall be burned up. God will burn up everything. God, just as he drowned the earth with flood, he's going to burn up everything that we are seeing on the earth. Everything will be burnt up. Um, Sammy said it, that they shall perish, but thou shalt endure. All of them shall wax old like garment, and eventually the, old, the earth will be rolled away like a garment, like a mat. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, so the earth shall be rolled away like a garment. Then Peter said, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, seeing that everything is going to be dissolved, all the work of 
Britain, people have labored, everything will be dissolved. What manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, according to his promise, we look for new heaven and a new earth wherein there dwelleth righteousness. We look for new heaven and earth. That is what every believer is looking for. This heaven and earth is old and is going to be melted with fervent heat. Everything. Doesn't matter who you are. Just as death does not respect anybody. That's how. The only people that death respect are the people that have put their trust in God. People that know their God and are strong and do exploit. People that know who they are in Christ. Because death is swallowed up in victory. Unless God appoints the day you die, then death cannot harass your life. We are for beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blemish. And account that the long suffering of the Lord, our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. The people are saying, well, Jesus is not coming, Jesus is not coming. That's what he's saying here that the long suffering of Christ is because God wants people to be saved. Heaven and earth will pass away. Generally, one generation goes, another one replaces. People are high up there, but then maybe their children are higher than them. Somebody built, 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 and thinking that he has built his best. Solomon, it took him how many years? Eight years to build the temple of God and 13 years to build his own house and a house for his wives. He had everything. Where are the things that Solomon has today? The material things are deception. The Lord Jesus said, if you have food, clothing, and shelter, that's enough. That God will not let you down. Seek first the kingdom of God. The new heaven that is coming. The kingdom of righteousness. Seek that first. Invest. Jesus said first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything else will be added. God will promise that he will give you everything. Everything. He will give you your desires. Don't pursue those who want to be rich have put themselves through many sorrows and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Some have killed people just because they want to be rich with material things. Money are paper. God promised that he would take care of us. Jesus said we should pray every day. Give us this day our daily bread. God knows what we need. God has put himself out there to make sure that everything that is needed by man, he will supply every day. Every day his mercies are new. When the people of Israel entered the wilderness, there was no richer, there was no poorer. Because all of them entered the wilderness, all of them, God was feeding everybody. God was a canopy of glory round about them. Every one of them lived in tents. God was providing them water. God was providing them food. God was the rock that followed them and when they needed water God would ask Moses to speak to this rock and he will give you water so they didn't have to have many cars on the road for 40 years all they needed was faith in God to bring them to the promised land God wants us to learn to live by faith the word of God said that the just shall live by faith the only thing that you will take out of this life is your soul then live by faith live have peace with God Acquaint yourself with God so that the peace of God will come upon you. So because the Bible says that God giveth his beloved sleep. Many people that are rich by bad means are cannot even sleep at night. They can't even sleep. Oh God have mercy. There is no free gift from Satan. I plead people of the earth. I plead to the house of Israel, let us turn to God. Let us abandon this wickedness of this world. 
and surrender our lives to our maker. The everyone, the lives we live, the life we live is a gift from God. All flesh is grass and all the glory of the flesh is the glory of the grass. The grass fades away. The grass withers and fades away. We see it in nature. The spring comes, everything spring up and beautiful and blossom in summer and dry and wither in the fall. The leaves fall down and new generation takes over. Next spring, this new springing up, this shows you the faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God to continue to give us new leaves, to continue to give us new things. You know, you 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 mow your field, the grass is on the field, you mow it and the next week it starts springing up again. And Jesus said that, oh, I have looked at the birds, how God took time to decorate birds. Beautiful birds, beautiful yet. They are not like, just like nothing. Nobody goes about catching them and eating them and making them. They just fly in the air. And they are so beautiful. I have seen beautiful birds. God takes time to decorate them. God is the best artist. God will take care of his people. The Lord Jesus said, Fear not, little flocks. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do not labor to the point of forgetting your maker. Do not invest on the earth. Use what you have. If you have millions, share it with the poor. John the Baptist said, If you have two coats, Give one to somebody and take one. If you have something that somebody doesn't have, you have more than enough, give to those who are in need. Daniel said to the to King Nebuchadnezzar, as he was boasting that he has this, he has that, 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 the kingdom. God showed him that his life will soon be turned to a beast. He was going to be turned to a beast. And Daniel said to him, give his goods to the poor and repent from his wickedness so that God will lengthen his days. Taking care of the poor will lengthen your days on earth. Ignoring their cries will cause God to ignore your own. Everybody is answerable, accountable to God. Everybody, the rich and poor. Don't close your eyes to your poor neighbor. Help. Help. If you see a struggling widow with many children, give scholarship to the children. You can afford, instead of you to buy a car and to give to a governor, buy that car and give to the poor widow. And have, because the poor widow cannot reward you. The governor can reward you. So you don't have reward from God. But the poor widow, if you buy a car and give to the poor widow, that's where you have reward. Because the Bible says that the pure religion and undefiled before God is to the pure religion and undefiled before God is to visit their widows in their affliction. To visit the widows in their affliction. Thank you, Jesus. Help the poor so that God will prolong your life. Don't go and accumulate your money in the bank. You have billions in the bank. All that you are just having billions and all that you are known for is your billions. What are you doing with them? If you die today, what will happen to them? But God has pledged to take care of you day by day. Whether you have billions, whether you don't have billions. God said, I will take care of you because the mercies of God are new every morning. He is the giver of life. He is the giver of every good thing. All good things, all every good thing comes from God. He has planned for every life he created upon the earth. He gives rain. He gives. He, when we put seed on the ground, he gives the increase. There's nothing we can. So what you have, use it to help the poor and the needy. And God will give you a reward. And above all, Jesus is a gift of God to the world, the gift of eternal life. In him is life. 
Without Christ, life is wasted. Life is a dunk. Without Christ, the living dog is better than a dead lion. When you look at people growing old, the question I ask myself is, what will be their end without Christ? The end is that they are going to turn to the dust and they will die poor, it's part of what they have, and then they will spend eternity in the lake of fire. But I beg you, consider what's happening in life. This week alone, many people just entered flights, you know, Iran, bound to somewhere, the plane rose brrr, and then crashed. Everybody died. How many of them that were in that plane know that they were going to die the next minute? Trump took a decision that has cost 80 soldiers of their lives already. And many people are marching to go and march to their death. What is it about? What is it about life? Many children are going to become fatherless. Many women are going to become widows as they are marching now to go to the Middle East just because of a simple decision somebody took without consulting God. And yet, so let us walk in the light of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let us turn to God. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. The only substance. That's why Solomon said, in of making many books, there will be no end. Much learning is the willingness of the flesh. That the, the only thing that is good for man is to fear God and to keep his ways. That's all. Fear God. Let us hear the conclusion of the matter. That's what Solomon said. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his ways. Because everything there is a season. It's always a season for everything under the sun. Always a season. Many people left, did many wicked things and left their children to face the consequence of what they did. Season to plant and season to reap. Father, I pray that by this message that you will call people to understanding. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.